So your emotional sentiment is changing when it comes to the house and market, or perhaps it's remaining the exact same. Well, stick around because on this month's First to Know, I'm going to bring you what is happening in the Denver metro market when it comes to pricing, demand, and overall inventory so we can have a better understanding of where is the housing market going using the stats that are first to be known from what happened in June, kicking it off right now on this 4th of July holiday weekend. <music> sticking around, let's dive right into the key area when it comes to overall median sales price. We were looking at $666,963 ending the month of June, and that's 11% over where we were this time last year, leading to many of you making upwards to $50,000, $60,000 of equity or more over the last year. Now, the big change though, from what was happening over the last six months to really what happened in the month of June, we saw the median closed price only rise by 0.1%, which is a huge change in overall pricing, which is what a lot of people were looking for. The median closed condo price was 430,000, which remained exactly the same as where it was in May's update, which is still though 14% up over year over year. So let's dive now into where we are with supply. As many people have been requesting, we would like to see home values start to cool down a little bit. Remember, 11% year over year is still double that of the annual rate of appreciation in context the last 30 years. But when we look at new listings, we saw 6,000 new listings hit the market, which is up 14% from where we were this time last month. However, active listings, 44% more active listings staying on the market in the month of June compared to where we were in May, which was a huge change, which also is leading to the months of inventory or supply of listings. So if you remember, all the way back in January, we were at like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 months of inventory, which really means in like five days, if nobody decided to sell their home, there'd be no homes available on the market. Now, when you look at months of supply last month, we were at 0 0.8. So this was slowly increasing, which was a good thing to help more inventory be available to slow down that of readily available homes and the rate of appreciation or home values rising. But we jumped 50% in one month last month, obviously with that increase of active available listings to 1.2 months of inventory. Now remember, this is still less inventory than where we were in 2020 and 2019. 2019, we were about two and a half months of inventory at this time. And as you look at 2020, we were still around 1.75. And that was after a big hiatus of no homes coming on the market due to the pandemic. So the key or the main area to look at here is what continues to happen with inventory. We are still in an extreme seller's market, meaning home values will rise. The seller's market we are in, because of the fact there's so much active available inventory now, it's timing that of sellers making the most amount of money when they sell, but having to have price sensitivity and an understanding of how to price the home, while buyers are having a lot of opportunity now to take advantage of a first time in a while inventory or active properties being on the market. So two key areas, sellers don't drop price too fast. Make sure that your real estate agent is marketing the property to drive showings because it's just taking a little bit longer to get homes under contract. And as we see a change in less homes coming on the market, you'll start to see more homes pending. The last part is closed price to list price based off the amount of days on market that the average home is on the market, only increased one day. So nine days on market was May, 10 days on market was June. We are seeing that rise because of the amount of new listings that remained active, that did not get contracts through the month of June. So you're gonna see 
a lot of changes through July going into August. So remember, the key is making sure that you have people you can connect with to figure out what's happening in the market, sharing your concerns, so that way, whatever your emotional sentiment is regarding it, now is a time to spend time learning about what's happening in the market, specifically the equity and value of your property. So if you're in the market to learn, not necessarily to buy or sell, and you wanna know how your home was impacted, obviously let me know. And if you're across the nation, I'll get you connected with the top 1% of agents throughout the world. And I continue to look forward to making sure you're the first to know on what's happening in the housing market. Right now, we are still in a seller's market Home prices are still appreciating. And what we need to do is look at this month over month to see month by month how this available inventory of active listings and the emotional decisions or psychology of sellers on where they're going to go with the values of their homes to sell their properties based off where they want to go next will dictate the rate of how much appreciation home values continue to rise. And right now, it's really up to what consumers do to figure out where the housing market will go, which means make sure to keep learning and make good decisions for what's best for your family. But also remember that 70% of the net worth of Americans is tied into real estate, making it still one of the safest and best choices of long-term investment opportunity. So make sure that if you're thinking of buying or selling, you're always reminded on what is the long-term opportunity for me. But right now, I'll keep bringing what is happening on the short-term, month by month. Thank you for your attention on this month's First to Know. And I look forward to talking to you in the first week of August as we get closer to get kids going back to school and being done with what is shaping up to be a great summer vacation for many.